and uh, but there are quite a few people that are still filing in because, as you know, parking is of the essence. So we're going to be just a couple minutes uh, later starting, but we promise that we will make the best of your time. So thank you. If you haven't signed in yet, there's a sign-in sheet over here. We would love to uh, be able to get back to you after tonight's meeting. Thank you. We are going to get started. Um, good evening. My name is Allison Niamella. I'm the Executive Director for the Batavia Park District. We're very happy to have you here. Thank you for taking time out of your family lives to be here. Uh, we really do appreciate it. Uh, I promise it will get a little cooler in this room. We are working on the temperature, uh, so that way it will be more comfortable as, as the night goes on. Um, tonight I'll be co-hosting this presentation with Williams Architects, with Mr. Tom Paulos. And Doug Paul's Richter in the far back. Um, so I will get started here. I've actually been with the Batavia Park District for 20 years, the executive director for seven, and so I'm in love with this community. I've been bitten by the Batavia bug, and um, I have, in my former role here at the Park District, had a chance to engage as the spokesperson for the district in the director of marketing role. So I too understand what it is that the public's been asking for since the year 2000. So here's open. Um, I'm really excited to open up to you uh, what we've learned from the community needs assessment, the listening tour, and focus groups. Always hopes that it works. There we go. All right, so tonight's agenda, um, I'll kick off talking about the community engagement that we've been doing over the course of two years. And uh, Williams Architects will cover the design aspects as well as the programming uh, of design areas. And last but not least, Next Steps Q&A will be handled by my leadership team over here in the corner. Uh, we will actually ask that you refrain from questions during the presentation so we can answer your questions individually with the roundtables afterwards. So we can have a more intimate discussion and we'll be here till eight o'clock for as long as you need. You need to be here after eight o'clock, we'll stay after for you. Uh, we just wanna make sure that we keep the dialogue going after this meeting. So community input is incredibly important. Uh, the Batavia Park District has been engaging with the community since Britta McKenna was president of the park <laughs> board for a very, very long time. Um, as you know, we have a very large social media presence uh, whether it's Facebook, Twitter, social media, platforms, you name it, we're there. Um, we're also at the platform, um, the very forefront in many different organizations. We have staff that are that belong to the Rotary Club, that belong to Main Street, that belong to many of the different organizations in town, so we can keep our finger on the pulse of what's going on. We started off two years ago with the Community Needs Assessment, back in 2017. In 2017, we engaged a firm called Acuity Research and Insights, Incorporated, and Acuity conducted a community-wide needs assessment. And with 11,000 households receiving a post to the online survey, or they were going to receive a paper survey if they requested one. 761 respondents came out of that, and which makes it statistically valid. So it's very important to note. It's a statistically valid survey, so we paid close attention to what it was that the public wants. And our demographics show up here, we have it available on our website. So if you'd like to visit our website, you can download this. It's on the home page, so it's nice and easy to find. Um, the average age was 50 years old mm -hmm. for the respondents. Um, you know, we felt pretty good about the, um, knowing that the data we received that we collected um, was statistically valid that we wanted to make sure we had a plan to follow up on it. So the survey distribution is as follows. You can see the river running through our town. Every single dot that you see that's platted is a respondent. 
So we cover the gamut of Batavia, from Kirk Road down to Butterfield, all the way to Nelson Lake Road. So one of the questions that had a very surprising, but not so surprising, <laughs> many of you answer, was what was our top weakness? What is an improvement opportunity that we could provide to the public? Facilities came out on top as the number one weakness. 34% of the public that responded had said, can you please do something about your facilities, the lack thereof, or improve upon what you have? And really, in the last 10 years, we have been improving upon what we have. If you look over at the Eastside Community Center, uh, even look here, we're planning on making this regulation-sized gym, uh, new flooring for next year. So we're really working on improving the existing facilities we already have. Shannon Hall, we just did a beautiful renovation uh, four years ago. When we, when we asked, what exactly are you looking for us, priority-wise, to improve, the top three answers were, we'd like you to add an indoor pool, because people love the quarry for the two and a half months that it's open, or I should say they like it, but they would love to have an indoor pool so we can create a year-round swimming experience. Second on the list, fitness components, whether it's a center or actual components. Um, people want a place where they can congregate, where they can work out, work on the wellness aspect. Indoor walking track. Uh, yes, the school district has one, but it's preoccupied the majority of the time with students, so people would like to have another experience for walking. <clears throat> so this is a little overwhelming. You can digest it. Like I said, this is up on our website. Um, so this particular slide talks, the first column with percentages shows you what the need or interest is for those amenities. So this is a laundry list of amenities that was listed in the survey, and the first percentage shows what people would like, what their need is, what their interest is. The second column is the percentage of their need or interest being met. So people are seeking this outside of Batavia or outside of Batavia Park District. So for instance, for swimming, a lot of people go to Sunset Pool, Vaughn Center, Del Nor. They're looking for opportunities outside of Batavia or at least outside of the Park District area. And we found that people are traveling up to 20 miles for these experiences. So you can see they're ranked sequentially by the, the need or interest. And um, so they, the indoor track was the biggest need, biggest interest, um, all the way to dedicated space for seniors. Which, just to make a side note, dedicated space for seniors can also mean multi-purpose rooms that can be dedicated during prime time hours for seniors, and then the after school hours can be dedicated towards youth. So multi-purpose means multifunctional, multi-generational. Top priority overall, so out of all those amenities, people said they would love an indoor recreation facility with a pool, fitness center, or fitness components such as free weights indoor track. 50%. That's pretty astounding. But this fact right here is the whole reason why we continued with our, continue, our community engagement. We had focus groups with up to 50 people on them. We, 50 people total for the focus groups. Um, we continued because 75% is astounding that say they are interested in some sort of recreational facility to meet the needs here in Batavia. So, as you can see, it's broken down into strongly support or somewhat support, but even according to Acuity, that this is what they do for a living, this is something that we needed to continue the conversation with you. So the next step after the needs assessment, we wanted to build a relationship with you. We wanted to engage with you. We held a listening tour this summer. It was for one month. Again, we brought Acuity Research and Insights back into the picture. And each session lasted two to two and a half hours long. With a show of hands, how many of you were a part of it? Let's see into Okay, so we do have quite a few people. Especially in the back row. <laughs> um, and we did a deep dive. We wanted to find out, okay, you said an indoor pool, or, or do you, you know, are you interested in an indoor pool? If so, what, tell us why. You know, is it for you? Is it for ones you love? Is it for an aging parent? Well, give us some insight. Let us know like, what it is that you want and why you're interested in it. So uh, it really was a deep dive 
And we found out a lot of really interesting stats that actually validated everything from the needs assessment. For the facility discussions, a lot of people said, you know, this is the era of Uber. This is the era of fast food. We want the here, we want the now. Let's make it close. Let's make it as convenient as possible. But from an economic standpoint, let's keep the dollars in Batavia. Let's, you know, buy local. That, that's huge. Let's do that and let's do it now. Benefit to all residents. Make it multi-generational. Whatever you end up building, this is what the public told us, whatever you end up building, make sure it's something that my neighbors can do with me or that my 90-year-old mother can do with me. Like, make sure it's something that we can bring people together and connect and congregate as a community. And address changing community trends and needs. I can tell you that pickleball is a huge trend on the uptick. And you know, our staff does a great job of paying attention to trends on a national level, state level. We like to be an innovator. We just held our first coop tournament. Coop, how many of you know what coop is? Come on, let's be on. Oh, it's a lot. <laughs> but um, so we really like to be on the cutting edge of things. Batavia really is trying to be innovative, and we're doing things that are knocking the socks off of Geneva and St. Charles Park districts. Mm-hmm. Amenities within. So again, if we're talking about the listening tour, the deep dive. The number one thing that came out wasn't listed on our needs assessment. Indoor turf. And the reason for this, people said they wanted a year-round experience, just like with swimming. They want to have the outside experience, but then wintertime, because we're in the Midwest, they want something where they can go year-round. And with indoor turf, if it's raining outside, what better way to bring practices inside? In the wintertime, bring it inside. And build it large enough where it could be soccer, volleyball, every sport can exist in indoor turf, with the exception of basketball. But being creative and clever, you can have basketball. You just have to lay tiles of gym floor on top, much like the United Center, laying down, the, you know, there's ice underneath the basketball floor there, tiles. Architecturally, it can happen, and you just need the magic and the, the brains behind it to make things like that happen. Uh, indoor water, you know, it, we're no strangers to. Batavia being the last in the Tri City is to have an, to have a swimming pool. We have a beach. It's great. The non-residents love it more than the residents. So our surveys tell us. Um, you know, we take great care of the beach, but people like to have something that's temperature regulated. People are kind of done with the whole solar powered or solar heated. You know, they really want to have something that uh, you know a warm experience that they can feel comfortable with. And fitness facility, this doesn't mean a fitness center, according to our listening tour uh, participants. They really wanted something that they could, they wanted to have an area for CrossFit. It could be a class for that, it could be a fitness on demand class where you don't have to have an instructor, but you can pop in a CD and you can have a private classroom of your own. So really just thinking beyond the traditional facility needs. A lounge area for socializing. This came up in every single listening tour. People really wanted to connect. You know, Batavia, as we know, is very special. We have the highest number of volunteers in Batavia. We have, you know, festivals that everybody treats as like a class reunion. You can see people from 30 years ago from Edwin Mill City Festival. Um, you know, and you don't get that in the other areas that surround us. You know, Batavia is truly something special. People wanted to have an area where they could have a fire pit and meet total strangers around the fire pit. They can play acoustic guitar and have an open mic. You know, just a place where people can go, whether it's outside and have an experience in a patio, and maybe there's tournament play inside going on, but then they can connect with other people outside. And indoor open gyms. So at the park district here, we have two gym spaces. We have one and only regulation size gym, high school regulation size. It's on the opposite wall here, and we have a junior high regulation size gym. You know, and that's, we are programming rich, but facility poor in that regard. Uh, Social elements, we did talk about this. Uh, Entertainment opportunities, people really want to connect again. It's really about getting to know each other and feeling comfortable and safe and really that small town charm. You know, I, I like to say that Batavia is Small town, big charm. Small town, big shoulders. 
catch my drift. So <laughs> there's a lot of that small town big spirit. Um, and here people can really have a connection. Um, game nights, you know, people love, people that do go out to the moose love it. Why? Because they can run into people that they know there. They can feel comfortable there. They feel safe there. But is that ambiance and atmosphere really what they want? Well, they like something different, but they kind of want that cheers atmosphere where everybody knows their name. Um, guest speakers, demonstrations, social gathering space, you catch my drift. Um, one thing, again, brought up in every single listening tour, people want an alternative to the quarry. So we did mention a lot about this. Uh, you're on swimming, just like with the turf. You're on play opportunities. And greater sense of safety. We know for a fact that Octavia High School has to rent uh, from West Chicago, and their teams have to take a bus, travel all the way across to get there and back. And that can be very cumbersome and very, uh, any of you some parents, I see a lot of nodding heads. <laughs> you get it. It's a lot. It's very taxing and burdensome. So, you know, if we can provide that experience here in town, uh, all the better. So that's really, up to this point, this is what we've heard from you. Between the needs assessment, the focus groups, the listening tour. And now, this is just a reminder of who we are and where we match up. So. We serve 95,000 people annually. That includes non-residents as well as residents. Uh, we are the number one employer of youth. We're really proud of that because you know, we're, we're teaching teenagers how to set their alarm clocks to be responsible <laughs> in the morning for whether it's lifeguarding, camp counselors, gymnastics coaches. You know, we're really proud of that. You know, we're, we're raising a generation with you. And uh, we have just shy of 400 acres. That's pretty significant for Batavia. When you look at the size of Batavia, um, you know, population 27,000 per the census from 10 years ago, uh, 40, 400 acres is significant. Um, you know, in 2,000 programs a year, as I said, we're programming rich, but facility poor. And to that point, here's our parks and properties map. It's really tiny, so I'm not going to stand up long because I don't want you to have a high stream. <laughs> but, um, you know, we do have this facility, which has that high school regulation size gym. This is our one and only multi-purpose room in the district that's designated for multi-purpose. This is where gymnastics, this is where we have our board meetings. This is where a lot of birthday parties take place. Um, we've done the best we can with it. You know, fresh coat of paint. Um, you can work on the air conditioning here, I think. <laughs> um, but, you know, Downstairs is our child care area. We don't have an elevator in this facility. So because we don't have an elevator, it's not ADA accessible. And that does no good for anybody that's on crutches, a wheelchair. Um, you know, we really want to be ADA accessible, but unfortunately it would be cost prohibitive to put an elevator in this facility. So, you know, we have to look at other options. Uh, we have Pike Bottom Center down at the Riverwalk. Beautiful center. If you've never been there, you've seen it. You just may not know the name. But Peg Bond Center, uh, thanks to Britta McKenna and her husband Steve, that helped raise the funds way back when um, on a committee to develop the Riverwalk and put the bricks down. But that there's a beautiful performing arts center so we can have our concert series down there. And that is a primarily a rental facility. Um, we have tried programming in there, but there are some issues with acoustics. Uh, we have the lodge at Laurelwood used to be called the Old Boat Club. And that almost acts like a multi-purpose room, like one big room, but that's where our Special Recreation Association, Fox Valley Special Rec, uh, hosts their camps. So that's completely booked uh, for the majority of the time, especially in the spring and summer. And then we have the Eastside Community Center. That's the charm, that's the jewel. That We've invested a, a lot of resources into that facility for our preschool, the New Horizons Preschool. Um, and we also have uh, the junior high regulation size gym. So, you know, again, Shannon Hall's there. Um, we just uh, installed a commercial grade kitchen inside Shannon Hall. And uh, we will be offering cooking classes. You can have Thanksgiving <coughs> at Shannon Hall and be able to cook your feast there. We're going to um, work a lot with independent contractors and getting professional chefs to come in and teach classes. Maybe we offer some 
classes for college kids and how to cook. <laughs> um, but we're also working on our liquor, liquor license so we can cook with wine then, we can add it up. Uh, Shannon Hall is really the gem of the Park District um, when you look at facilities. Shannon Hall, um, we offer our yoga classes inside Shannon Hall. It's beautiful, the ambience with the stained glass windows. And we offer many a wedding. We usually have three weddings on a weekend um, at Shannon Hall. So it's tough when we've got programming that we want to offer, but then we also have the rentals that we know provide exposure for Batavia and it provides an opportunity for people to, again, congregate and make the most of the facility. Also, we have Kemp Hall, which is a charming little schoolhouse that's right by the Eastside Community Center, and that's our dance studio. And it's also, on the weekends, our bridal room. So we rent that as a bridal room. Uh, the brides will walk across to Shannon Hall. It's kind of a creative use of space. <laughs> and last but not least, we have our maintenance facility. We have one maintenance facility of the entire district maintaining 400 acres. So our tractors travel 30 miles one way and 30 miles back, um, full hour just to get to the furthest park on the east side of town or the west side of town. Um, so as you can imagine, or as you can see, we've got a lot of acreage and we're trying to make the, the most of it. And this is where I leave off, hand the baton to the architects. We've talked a lot about what you've said, what you felt, the deep dive. This is about continuing that conversation and talking about the relationships and where we can go from here. Thank you, Allison. Good evening, everyone. My name is Tom Polis with Williams Architects, and we are headquartered in Itasca, Illinois. We're rather local. It's an honor to be working with the Batavia Park District on this wonderful exploration of an activity center, a multi-generational activity center. And um, what Allison talked about from where we stand is really the foundation of where we come in and build from, and from our architectural prowess. And you have a lot, right? But you're calling for a desire for something a little bit more, and that is a new multi-generational activity center, or at least the exploration of the same. So. The information that you went through, and I'm not going to go through it all, or that Allison presented, I'm not going to go through it all, but the thing that stands out to us is the 75%. That's really off the charts. Um, nationally, as we work on these facilities, that's a strong point from the community saying, hey, there's something here that's lacking in that we're interested in learning more about. Uh, also in the survey results were the indoor pool as a top I call it top four, top three is what Allison said, but the top three, top four are the most important pieces that you can sure come into a facility. The other things are also important, but they could also be looked at as a cross-section of spaces with flexibility and to see how you can combine those spaces with the top four. That was the indoor track, um, as it was portrayed on here, fitness. We're likening that to the wellness experience. It's a community wellness kind of fitness experience, um, something that's different than you know the um, planet fitnesses and things like that. That's not what we're talking about here. It's self-directed exercise and things like that, um, resistive exercise. And then the, um, the pool, of course, and in no particular order, that was an indoor pool was a high priority. And it was interesting because the next one was actually an indoor pool with operations and um, oh, thank you. what I call leisure activities within the facility. So it's important for us to kind of digest all that information and see what that means at another level, and that's to get your input on all this information. So we start out moving forward. The listening tours were a great drill down, and from that we were able to kind of glean some design principles, high-level design principles as we're moving forward. One of them was this should be the heart of the community for all walks of life, for all to come, for all to embrace. It can be some free space, social gathering, and then you have your other space that you participate within that facility. But it's to bring everybody together in that social gathering that um, Allison talked about earlier. You know, to have all the technology in here and for all age groups. Um, something that would really embody the spirit of recreation and promote kind of, this is a recreation facility, let's play, let's have fun, celebrate it, let people see into it, let people understand it, and let it be special to your community. Something that was um, also part of our information gathering was 
boy, it would be nice if we connect this to the trail system outdoor. So we talked about indoor, but if you can somehow get this to an outdoor location where a trail exists, that's a benefit. Um, yeah, we know about Ubering, we know about driving to a facility, we know about biking to a facility, but sometimes walking to a facility is just as important and getting out on the trail. So that was a big design principle. We talked about you're in a flexible space. This is kind of the epitome of multi-use, I would say, because it's percent utilization is off the charts, which means it renders it kind of inoperable at times because you can't get into the space as much as you want to get into the space. So as we look at flexible and multi-use, yes, it's important to have a space that's subdividable, that's flexible, but it's also important that it isn't taxed such that the public can't use it uh, for their programming opportunities. Um, Multi-generational was a key word here, and that's one of our kind of highest design principles, quite honestly, that it's for all age groups, and it involves everyone in the community from a cross-section. Inclusive. Um, staff worked on this from the listening tours, and we thought that was important, you know, for all abilities and for all walks of life. Um, social and community well-being, so that it promotes that. It has a place here. The, the older adult is forever evolving in our line of work. You know, we're educating ourselves. We're growing into that role as younger adults, growing myself right there, growing into the older adult age, and we embrace those that are already at the older adult age. So something that offers that kind of experience. Promote healthy lifestyles. So when you think of the indoor pools, they could also be opportunities for indoor exercise and indoor um, learn to swim opportunities. And then of course there's uh, environmentally sustainable is big in this community, so we thought about environmental sustainability, that should be a design objective, to wherever it makes sense from an affordable standpoint, you know, so it's not to implement everything across the board that's environmentally sustainable, but things that make sense here. Um, the wind turbine is kind of synonymous with um, Batavia, but there are other opportunities. There are opportunities for vision, there are opportunities for um, getting natural daylight into a facility, there's, you know, just connectivity to outdoor spaces is a big deal from an environmental perspective. As well, the HVAC, and then there's the performance standards within a building. And maybe even we put some green features, meaning true green, within the facility. It doesn't mean a roof green garden, but something outside, something demonstrative. You know, there will be a site to this sometime. And then there's also the financial sustainability of this facility. You know, how you operate it. Um, what do we do to function, how are we funded, and how is this whole thing controlled such that it's financially sustainable uh, once it's built. That's a big piece to us. Lifelong lear learning experiences within the facility itself too are were important. And really all those are the criteria, the foundation from the listening tours, moving it forward to now what we're going to present as an opportunity for programs, right? So now I'm going to show you some pictures of spaces that kind of take the next step from what you heard in a verbal survey kind of context. And they're broken up into aquatics, um, athletics, turf falls under athletics, gymnasiums fall under athletics, many things fall under athletics. Wellness is what we've kind of geared the new group exercise and fitness experience to. General program space, so that's the multi-use general program, interchangeable terms. Uh, control is really what it takes to run this facility, the support for the facility, and then common space, corridors, lobbies, things like that. Um, so a lap pool, we're thinking from six to eight lane lap pool, um, something that's kind of invigorating, has some life to it, has the right ample deck space to it. So you think of a body of water, that's really important when you're doing um, swimming and learn to swim and programs, but so is your deck space because sometimes that dry instructional area is really important before you get into the water itself. And uh, for all the lifeguards and trainers, that, that means a lot to them. We're also thinking about a warm water program therapy pool. I, I don't like to call these therapy pools because they do much more than that. They're at a level of temperature which is somewhere around 92 degrees to 94 degrees that allow for a whole multitude of experiences. Birthday party rentals can come in here, aerobics, um, you can sit in the spa. This is just one depiction of one that we've done recently. They have ADA mobility coming into it, so you really can get a therapeutic experience here. And if you get a partner, a wellness partner anywhere, they're able to program out of this facility too. Um, spectator viewing, so you know, if we can somehow team this up, so not only for swim meets with that the Batavia Park District could offer, but perhaps with the high school. You know, there could be a dual synergy here and have some home opportunities there. I'm not saying sanctioned meets, but certainly some home meets in Batavia. 
Um, athletics. So athletics, we're looking at a multi-court gym, um, something that's subdividable, something that offers not only basketball, offers badminton, offers volleyball, offers pickleball, all in cross-striping, all the different lines represent a different activity. And there's even LED projection of these lines these days, too, that we're, we're also, that's up there as a technology to investigate, where you usually paint the prime court and then you could project the other courts. Uh, adjustable basketball rims and standards and things like that, and opportunities sometimes to break out from an indoor space to an outdoor turf space um, with those <coughs> overhead garage doors. A MAC gym is kind of a multi-athletic court gym, a little bit more versatile in its function. Sometimes it becomes a motor skills area. That's also something that we were investigating in this um, program opportunities. And then an indoor turf, and um, we're showing that while it's in play for soccer, lacrosse, softball, baseball. You could also do a court overlay on these seasonally. So there is a time where these indoor facilities, although we like to say all year long, there is a slow period of, of, of the summer months where perhaps the basketball and volleyball can pick up and if you did a court overlay. You wouldn't want to do it on a daily basis, but if you did it on a seasonal basis, that's an opportunity. And you'll hear more about that in the presentation. And then, of course, the track, the elevated track. Um, an indoor track that maybe connects somehow through an interstair to the outdoor op opportunity through a trail network. And just as important, yeah, you have views out, but you have views into the experiences within the facility. So if you're walking by wellness, if you're walking by the lobby space, sometimes we break them out right into the lobby. So the track becomes something that's unique. And in this particular case, we're showing a two-lane track. A lot of times, the first lane is for walkers, the second lane is for joggers and runners. Now, the three lanes is kind of really robotic because jogger, runner, walker, kind of hard to keep everybody in those three lanes, so we've learned over time the two use, usually functions a little bit better. And then the wellness is all about, you know, maybe some TRX, maybe some other kind of resistive machines, um, yoga, a whole opportunity for stretching and um, what we call group exercise studios, group X is the way to say it, or even self-directed fitness with a TRX beam up above. You could have an instructor in Los Angeles and people could come in and have a program opportunity there with somebody unique that's not part of the park district from a training perspective. And then some general program space we showed you earlier in terms of flexible and filling the coffers, but you know, a, a room that's situated such that it's dividable, it has open views. Sometimes it could have, like this one does here, an outdoor deck, so you could bring the function from the outside, inside, outside, and have an extended season on it. Um, the proper projection. Some of these rooms can be converted, converted over to eSports. So this is really more of a program opportunity. You do a couple tweaks, you have a, enough storage area for these machines. It's a growing trend out there right now, and it's more popular than people believe it to be if you're into that. It's beyond my own capacity, but anyway, I know a lot of younger millennials are probably out there. How many people, show of hands, anybody here at the eSports here? Right. Sure, yeah. Do okay. it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I hear that they sell these things and they make money on so <laughs> if you build the right habit. <laughs> so then in the party room and child care space is kind of the next kind of, so you, when you have a child care space, it's there for the right times of the facility when you want to come and use the facility, but sometimes it sits all dormant, so then it can become something else, like a party space, and work out in kind of in unison with that, and especially on the weekends. And then a warming kitchen, something that serves those multi-use rooms, but if you get the right serving window and you put it in the right location, it could also be a concessionaire for the entire facility and create a little cafe opportunity. And then, of course, there's the obvious control. You got to have to be able to greet people, and that's big. Hospitality is big. Customer service is big. Get this up front. Greet the, the people coming into the facility. Make it feel friendly and inviting, um, not so much like institutional. And then you have the back of house staff that supports it after well afterwards too. But there is good security and surveillance for everybody's peace of mind as well. So there are cameras in there. There are abilities. Usually, when you put these in the facility, they're orientated such that you could look at every major component in the facility. And to that, looking at every major component of the facility, well, that lobby space is important. That's your wow factor that's coming in. Upon entry, really, when we're designing facilities, one of our most important points is to come in and situate pieces such that you kind of get that 
feel and the experience of the entire facility. That you can see the natatorium, that you can kind of see where the gymnasium's at. You get a glimpse of the track, you get a glimpse of the wellness, and you kind of get an idea of where the general program rooms are. And that kind of self-orientates, and it's, it's not quite like a hotel lobby, but it's certainly a, a wow factor, and more importantly, it's the social gathering space. Um, then you have the sit-down opportunities for your cafe areas and your oversized corridors, queuing corridors and things like that for people to sit and gather, for people to have opportunities to view into the various activities. And sometimes just a comfort space. Um, this was a project that we're working on in Ohio where this was a big piece for the seniors. They wanted a little kind of social gathering and interaction space, but a place that they could maybe crochet and be off the beaten path. And so he, this was a real interesting space to consider. So my partner, Doug uh, Holzricker, is going to come in and talk about the, the four options we developed at this time. And the four options are not so much just all about design. They're about program opportunities and design. So listen carefully, because your input is going to be very valuable. And we are going to have input from you all at the end. It's just going to be in a little different fashion. I'll explain when Doug finishes the um, portion of the presentation. And I'll just quickly go through the four options Doug's going to be presenting. It's, the first one, the major difference is it's a U10 indoor turf field on it. So the indoor field, U10 represents an age group for soccer size and everything starts to fit within it. Doug will talk about the dimensional tolerances. The second option is what, what about no turf and a three-court gymnasium kind of option. The third option is a slightly smaller indoor turf, U8, with a MAC gym. You heard from Allison that you have this gym and you have one other, so what if you picked up that one and on the turf you use that seasonal overlay concept, just to consider. And then the fourth option is a two-facility option, and Doug will talk about what the two different facilities might mean um, if they're broken up and if that's something that's desired within the facility, um, within, the, within the district, because it did come up in the listening tour. It didn't come up in the survey, but it did come up in the listening tour, so we wanted to acknowledge that. Um, I'm just going to chime in for a quick second. Yeah, yeah. Um, what's going to be presented are merely con very conceptual plans. Absolutely. Preliminary. That's what tonight's about, to see what you like, don't like, what amenities, uh, would you rather pull out, do you want to keep in? Like, this is very much a massaging session in terms of your introdu introduction to these four concepts. So this is all very preliminary. Right, so these are the four concepts for your input and Please give us your input. I'm, I'm going to stress that. So in the program-driven options, and yes, very diagrammatic. What we want to get to is a kind of singular focus solution. So as you look at these, if you see something, one option that you like, but you want to, you like it, and you like this option the most, you, we can do that. It's not like you have to pick one, two, three, or four. It's what one just resonates the most with you, and what do you like about another option or two that you'd like to see included with within your preferred option. And Tom, the eight-lane pools included in every single option as well, correct? No, there is six lane and eight lane. So that could be something that you say, hey, I like this option, but pick up two more lanes. Okay. Without any further ado, Doug will All right, thank you, Tom. <laughs> My name is Doug Holtzfrichter with Williams Architects, and it's, again, it's great to be on board with uh, the Park District on this project. Um, Allison and Tom have, have done a great job in running through um, the input and information that we've gathered to date. Now some fun. We want to see <laughs> kind of what these might look like in a conceptual planning uh, exercise and to re kind of to reinforce what they said. We've been looking at some planning at a very high level from 30,000 feet, uh, kicking around some ideas and concepts. Uh, truly kicking them around, and they're, they're really unrefined. So it gives us all an opportunity to chime in and, and provide some additional input. So the listing of spaces here, this is how we start our, our planning process. We look at the spaces that have been uh, of interest to the community, and we be begin to assign areas to these spaces. For instance, the top, very top one, the athletics, is uh, with the uh, U10 turf court, is 25,900 feet. Now, as Tom said, the only distinguishing factor between the four schemes that we'll show you, with the exception of the four, is um, the fact that the athletic component changes 
significantly from one to the other. Otherwise, the other components, whether it be multi-purpose, uh, fitness, or wellness, they pretty much stay the same in each scheme. So, and, and, and the aquatics. And, and the aquatics, aquatics does week. as well. Week, yeah. So I won't read you all of these numbers, but you can see the listing of spaces that we are considering. And it's, it's very apparent that the Park District, through this uh, facility programming exercise, is really, really, they really have a desire to satisfy the interests of the community and the desires brought forth in the survey. So this is a concept plan that could respond to that first listing of spaces. Uh, I'm going to see if I can work this thing. If not, I've got a backup in my pocket. Yes. <laughs> Oops. Yep. Oops. Um, so on the right hand side is the large athletic uh, component. In this case, it's a turf field. It's a U10 size soccer field. And I'm starting with this because this is the, the, one of the driving factors between this scheme to differentiate this scheme from the others. Uh, the color of this field may be a little deceiving. It would be an artificial turf field. Uh, and so that's the distinguishing factor. Starting at the beginning, however, we're going to come into the building this way. There's a large greeting area and open lobby space for community gathering and for control. We then uh, circulate through the building, through these corridors here, these large corridors. We can come to the turf field, we can, or we can come to the aquatic component, which is here. In this case, we have a six-lane lab pool with a warm water therapy pool. Now, again, these are unre unrefined schemes. Uh, as should, this, should things move forward, uh, there would be a great deal of refinement uh, necessary. Uh, these were, this is the locker room core for the building. Uh, this is a uh, child care and multi-use space here. Then we have multi-use here as well, and various storage components through the through the uh, building to serve the various elements. And as Tom and I alluded to earlier, that multi-space, those two multi-space rooms can open up into one large room, so you can designate it as a baby boomer center, as a traditionalist center, as a birthday party space, as a, even a, a, I guess a, a less grand scale, but a banquet area if you wanted to. Right, and it has a warming kitchen, so that's what the WC at the very top stands for, in which it would serve the corridor area, the lobby, as well as those rooms. And then on the other side, the party room, like Doug pointed out, the child care room could be a, another multi-use space. And here we have sports services, uh, uh, facility uh, uh, control and facility uh, operations would be in this area. Uh, these, this scheme, as well as the other schemes, would have the ability to be expanded. Athletics could be expanded this way, as well as the multi-use spaces and uh, other components as well. There is a second level or excuse me, this is an option to, to put a, a hard court over the surface of the turf field. So in this uh, alternative option, or, or we, we could add the three full-size courts, with, uh, which would run this way, and then over each full-size court, you could have up to three volleyball courts, or pickleball courts, uh, for, to give it a good flexible uh, program. This is the second level. On the second level, we could, uh, we'll have a stair and elevator in the main lobby coming up to uh, well, wellness and, uh, and group exercise in this area. So uh, these uh, facilities, these rooms overlook the track and the gym and as well as the lobby space. So it provides a nice open feel to the building and it shows off all of the various components in the building by opening the spaces up to each other. Um, this rooftop also could be used as a future expansion area for the second floor. And we have the uh, running track around the perimeter of the, uh, the athletic component here. So moving to the second scheme, uh, it, this is a uh, the differentiator here. Here is that we have a three-court uh, 
gymnasium in lieu of the turf field. The other components are basically the same. So again, this is the indoor court, uh, three full courts. The other components are the same with the aquatics here, the large lobby control area here. And just, just to yeah. chime in here for a second, Doug, um, the Batavia Park District currently rents uh, gym space from the school district. Um, and so this would provide us an opportunity to alleviate some of that pressure to rent um, by having our own gym space. So if you're wondering why you know, we have a junior high science regulation gym already and one high school regulation science gym, just having a gym in general, whether it's one or three, um, provides us with more programming opportunities. Um, the multi-use core remains here with the warming kitchen, the child care, and this is the, uh, the operations area. Again, very conceptual, just to give you an indication of what the program could look graphically, look like graphically. Uh, second floor again, a repeat of what you've seen uh, with the large uh, athletic component here with the track around the perimeter. On to the third option, in this case, we have uh, a U8 turf field, slightly smaller than the U10, with a multi-athletic uh, gym, about the same size. This is what this, this uh, scheme would look like with the turf field here, and with the hard surface court for basketball, volleyball, etc in this area. The other components are the same except the aquatic in this case we are showing an eight lane lap pool with spectator viewing here again the locker room pours here. Um, no warm water program there before in this because we expanded the, the lap pool to eight lanes from six lanes. Same depth stuff. So the depth of this pool as Tom alluded to we have a Diving end here shown, and then we have a shallow end, shallow end up here. So we do have the opportunity for diving in this pool as well. Very similar second floor in this scheme as well, with the track around the perimeter. Uh, again, this is a bit larger here as well, I believe, and this takes the place of uh, the aquatic component is one pool instead of two, this being an eight lane pool. Um, the fourth is a split facility with it's a two facility option where in, in this uh, first part we have the athletics, the track, the aquatics. Well, this is the scheme, this is the program. Let's look at the scheme now. So we're, we're splitting it where we have the athletics and multi-use in this uh, facility. We have operations here and we have locker rooms here. So this handles primarily athletics uh, and multi-use in this facility. Moving up and then we have a second floor with a track around the perimeter of the athletics. Open, open lobby, open to the lobby on this first floor. Moving to the second part of this scheme which is Facility number two, it's, it has a, a, an aquatics emphasis. In this case, we're showing a six, six lane lap pool with warm water. We have the locker room core here, a large lobby space. Uh, and then we have the, the group exercise uh, in this area and wellness as well in this area. So this is, you can think about this as an aquatics and, and wellness uh, facility. The other facility in the split scheme would be more athletic. Active rice. So with that, we'd like to move to Q&A and to do so. So yeah, here's where we'd love to get your input. So we have comment cards, and I know you guys probably have a lot of questions. We're here to answer your questions, but we'd really like you to document your thoughts um, on these comment cards. You could write them anywhere as, after you ask the questions. We're going to set up some easels with some imagery, mostly of these schemes, and of the pictorial of the program. 
and a little bit of the basic or the foundation of the needs. We're going to spread them around, and you can come talk to any one of us. We're, we're available to, um, and I think staff is going to support as well. They've been so patiently sitting on the side there. And, um, and Tom, there's just two things that I'd like to yeah. mention. Uh, one, I know a lot of you are probably thinking, like, wait a second, I've seen conceptual designs. Are we going out for a referendum? Like, how many of you are probably like, whoa, what's going on here? The current board has not announced that we're going out for referendums. We are not, right now, we are not going out for a referendum. We can say that we are we have transparency in government. Uh, you can look at the minutes from our park board meetings up on our website. We are not, as it stands, October 8th, going out for a referendum. Um, and also another thing that you know our staff is not going to be able to answer because we don't have a conceptual design selected is cost. Because really the cost boils down to amenities. And there's a price tag to every amenity. So we need to find out from you what are the needs first. And we can figure out what we can afford based on what amenities you're seeking, what you're looking for. So that's really what we're looking for tonight. So we can't give you any answers on cost, but we can uh, learn a little bit more about what it is that you're looking for uh, in a facility. And we are all ears. And we're here to answer any other questions that you may have tonight. Yeah, and I, and I think we could safely say that all the schemes that we, or the options, the options that we've come up with are generally kind of in the same spirit of architectural and impact. Um, the, the two solution scheme will definitely have some duplication of space, for lack of a better word, support space, control space, um, and in some regards, just extra volume and infrastructure around it. And probably a little bit more important than that is the operational kind of functionality of the two facilities being separate versus combined, you know, and the experience with regards to the same. You're going to be traveling the two. Because they wouldn't be on the same site. That wouldn't make a whole lot of sense. Um, so, thank we are, you. We are eager to hear yeah. what you have to say. And uh, my leadership team is going to be at the various tables. We do have uh, options, the conceptual designs yeah, we're going to put them up. that we're going to put up. So um, the architects will be here as well to answer any questions you have. Uh, we'll be taking a lot of notes. Again, uh, we, we want to hear from you. You know, this, we, we feel like we've done our homework, or we know we've done our homework up until this point, and we want to continue that conversation. And we hope you are just as excited about what the future may hold as we are. And thank you for your time, but don't leave yet. <laughs> <laughs>